All right, now, nah, so um, going over to the NFL, you know, we got the week eight um, recap. And, and Jay, I mean, we, we had some stuff that went on this week that, that was un NFL like. We had the, the fighting Mike Whites up there, you know, doing what they did with Cincinnati. Um, the Saints win a game with a pick six, dare I say. So, with that said, what, what other action caught your eyes this week? There's uh there's two there's two that stood out for me two teams who maybe you kind of look at them and you kind of you know trying to shove them out the way of some of these up and coming teams but I think Pittsburgh and New England both sent messages this week that they're not done just yet, uh, just yet. Uh, Pittsburgh now is on I believe they're on a three game winning streak they were one and three now they've won three in a row they go on the road to Cleveland Cleveland I mean. Coming into the season, I think we both had pretty high expectations for Cleveland. Absolutely. And, uh, wouldn't you know, you know, as soon as you do that, then they, they come in here with, um, they up here dropping 10 points. And I know Pittsburgh's defense is to be respected. Um, I certainly got a lot of respect for them. But, I mean, this this is not the same defense they had last season. When you talk about the loss of Bud Dupree, when you talk about no Stephon Tuitt right now, um, some of these secondary guys, whether it's Steven Nelson, whether it's a Mike Hilton, um, they just not the same, and yet they able to just take down this Cleveland offense to ten points. Baker Mayfield, I mean, a pedestrian day throwing the football, a QBR about fifty four. Uh, Big Ben, I mean, he wasn't great, but he's able to do enough to get the win. I really like what Pittsburgh's doing with Najee Harris. I mean, this guy is, I mean, this guy's not putting up the greatest numbers as far as yards per carry, but he is. He's playing. He's being a workhorse back. Um, they really utilizing him well, I believe, and then. You know, uh, the, the defense just doing what you need to do. And then I think I think it goes back to Mike Tomlin. I mean, I think we, we should people should have learned by now to just never underestimate this guy and what he's able to do as a master motivator um, and to just get, you know, rally guys, you know, around him um, and, and Big Ben. I mean, Big Ben's last ride. Uh, I think that's what we believe. Um, and I just I like what I'm seeing. You know, it'd be I think it'd be a, sh a real shame if Pittsburgh just kind of fell flat on their face in Big Ben's final season. I, I don't know how far this team can go, but um, they do appear on the upswing. That young offensive line appears to be gelling. I like that. And um, Cleveland on the other side, they out here. They're at the bottom of the AFC North. And we talked about you know who's the best division in football. It's uh it's pretty close right now between I think the AFC West, but the, uh, excuse me the NFC West. But I think the AFC North right now, Cleveland's at the bottom at 500. In the NFC West, you got Seattle and San Francisco kind of just like flopping around. Just, you know, they they got everything but their nose underwater right now. It's just, it's not a great look for either team. I think the AFC North is the best division. But um, it, it's surprising that Cleveland is at the bottom and just, just continues to be like mystifying. Like, you know, what, where, is Odell, where is Odell Beckham? Like one catch for six yards on one target. Like I don't, I don't. We haven't spent a lot of time on Odell this year, and I don't. There's no reason to. But my God, like what? What has happened to Odell? Like I don't. You know, is he? Maybe he's still dealing with an injury. He's playing through pain. But at some point, we just got to ask the question. Like I don't think there's any reason for us to talk about him as a top ten receiver anymore. There's there's just nothing to like. You know, evaluate. So right. I think Pittsburgh look on the upswing. I think Cleveland's a big disappointment right now. 500 at this stage is not what we expected. I don't think it's what anybody else expected. So that's a huge deal. Um, look, New England at four and four. Like I want to say, they were one and three uh, starting off. Um, they they uh, they've had some they've had some really tough losses. They've had moments where they just don't appear to have a clue what they're doing. But um, look, look, you go on the road and you beat a Chargers team who is about as explosive as any other team, you know, offensively. Um, listen. Uh, Justin Herbert had a really tough time against this defense. Uh, I, I that's kind of what I expected. Um, I'm looking at a QBR of 16. Uh, that is just that that's god awful. Uh, 18 of 15, 223, two touchdowns, two interceptions. And this is um I want to say this is the second straight week that the Chargers have been very very bad. They lost. They also lost to Baltimore. That was a blowout loss um, where I think they uh, the Chargers had six points. Yeah. So two straight two straight um. Two straight weeks where the Chargers just, you know, they they look like the best thing smoking for a little bit in the AFC. Now they're back to four and three. They're close to 500. And then, um, you know, not a great performance uh, by Mac Jones, but he didn't turn the ball over. And then the Patriots really effective 
um, using that ground game. That's something that the Chargers are one, uh, maybe the, I think they're the worst team in football against the run. And I think they came in this week giving up about 160 yards on the ground. Um, and we talked about that, what that means for, you know, a team like Arizona as well. I mean, these teams that, that, that cannot s- stop the run, I mean, it's hard for me to take them like seriously as legitimate contenders because it, it all starts with your ability to stop the run defensively. If you can't do that, then you're, you're in for a world of trouble. And uh, I think that's what the Chargers are looking at right now. But the Patriots with Bill Belichick and the Steelers with Mike Tomlin, that's what really stood out to me this week. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, first, I, uh, you know, I, I want to hit on the, the games that I brought up in the intro, but how about them Eagles, man? The Eagles been out here flat, uh, looking pretty lackluster. Uh, Eagles, they've been looking like crows out here. And, um, you know, they come out here and drop 44 on the winless lines. But here's the deal. I know people saying it's the lines. It's the lines. Like, what's Can the I, big deal? I, let me slide in real quick because I have to okay. know. I, I have This is a throwback to, like, at least two months ago. But I'd like to know at O and eight, uh, Dan Campbell, is he still grooming Deuce Staley for a head coaching position? Can we get an update on that, please? You're O and eight, Dan. Stop grooming people. You're not even groomed. You clearly ain't ready for this. Uh I I I agree. I agree. He shouldn't be grooming anybody because he's not groomed. We know him as kneecaps. Either way, um, you know, like I said, you know, people saying, oh, it's the Lions, it's the Lions. But listen, the, the Lions, what, they 0-8, but I think their first six games, they lost by, you know, one possession or less. So it yeah, wasn't like... I think this is the first time they got really blasted for what right. it's worth. Right. So, it, you know, like you said, for what it's worth. So, like, you know, I, I, that's something, right? The Eagles did something. They went out there, they, they won a game they should have won. And they want it in a convincing fashion. So I, I want to give, you know, some flowers to Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni out there, what they got going on. But like I said with the Saints and Bucks, listen, here's a game where um, the Saints end up losing. They, they starting quarterback in this one. Uh, they probably lost them for the season, I think. And we're going to figure out, you know, will it be Taysom Hill? Will it be Trevor Simeon here in the, in the future? But I just found it to be interesting. That Tom Brady lost the game on a pick six. Do you know that's the first time in his career he lost the game on a pick six? Who, who was that again? Tom Brady. Oh, okay. Oh, that's that's uh, a stat there. Right. Um. So I, I thought that was interesting, but I, you know, what was even more bother bothered me even more in that game was what was Leonard Fournette? Well, you know, yeah. what was Ronald Jones? Yeah. I mean, Giovanni Bernard, the guy they got from Cincinnati. The guy, I mean, everybody told me, hey, man, they don't need no three running backs on the roster. They got to figure it out. Well, I mean, what, what are we doing here? I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm looking at this and I'm just like, <sighs> you know, I don't, I don't know. Uh, so uh, the Bucks, man, we consider the Bucks one of the top, one of those top teams when we talk about the top heaviness of the NFC. Uh, that, that didn't look good. That didn't look good. Is it any given Sunday? I got it, but that didn't look good. And then you know the old fighting Mike Whites. I mean the New York Jets. Um, came out here and um, really surprised a lot of folks with their performance against the Cincinnati Bengals. I don't know if Cincinnati was just out here reading the news clippings or what, but uh, we, it was a lot of praise he, the, you know, to the Cincinnati Bengals. And then you come out here and get 34 put on you um, by the Jets. Now listen, I know you put up 31, so I got it. Evidently, this would. Most people will see this score and be like, it's, "This was a born burner. It was a shootout. It was a, it was a game that wasn't supposed to happen." Was what it was. Like, come on, Cincinnati, you wasn't supposed to lose this to the Jets. And last but not least, I go down to um, last night's game, man. Um, the Giants and the Chiefs. Listen, man, this Chiefs defense. And, and listen, I know a lot of people want to say, "What's going on with Patrick Mahomes?" I don't think anything going on with Patrick Mahomes. Tyreek Hill seemed to have a good day. So that tells me, I don't know if it's Patrick Mahomes or I don't know if it's that other supporting cast on the offense that's not getting it done. And I'm including Travis Kelsey in that. He's just not playing up the par right now. I don't know what his problem is. They out here putting middle linebackers on Travis Kelsey. That's not going to cut it. Like, he's not playing up the par. If he's hurt, maybe he don't need to play through injury because if this is the performance we're going to get, We'll rather see you celebrate tight end you than be out here flopping around, stinking up the joint. Because 
you, you're really not helping Patrick Mahomes all that much out here. Um, and, and then the likes of Robinson and Hartman and and and, and, uh, and Gordon Pringle. And, Pringle. and Pringle. Like, what are we out of? What, any of the, if, please stand up. Is any of those guys going to perform for the Kansas City? Because I, all I hear is Mahomes ain't looking like this. Mahomes ain't looking like that. But clearly, when you come to play, ask, ask Tyreek Hill. He going to find you. Give him some time. He going to deliver. But I'm just looking at a bunch of underperforming out here on the offense. And then we know what the defense is. Like I say, Jay, me and you can line up in the I formation and get, get up the middle on that defense. So it, <laughs> I'm not that surprised about that, right? Um, so with that said, man, I, I, I think the Chiefs, if you're a Chief fan, it might be panic mode now when you see only one guy suiting up and preparing. And, and the crazy thing is, I thought the Giants was just going to do what everybody else do, double break Tyreek Hill. So somehow Tyreek still got loose, but yeah, man, it, it's, it's looking like a one side of the fair there in Kansas City. It might be time to panic there, but through all in all, that's what I've seen in week eight.